The video game controller. Without these things, this is what gaming would look like. Wow. And with these things, well, this is what gaming looks like. There's no two ways about it, a video game controller is integral to the gaming experience. So much so that a controller's quality can actually directly impact the perception and enjoyment of a video game. There's no doubt that a good controller is fully capable of elevating what may have been an okay or average game into an amazing experience. Whilst on the other hand, a poor controller is fully capable of ruining what would have otherwise been an amazing game. And look, it's fair to say that overall, Nintendo has some pretty amazing controllers, but they're by no means perfect. Which is why today's video is going to focus on the worst feature from every Nintendo controller. And just to clarify, this video is going to focus on the base controller of every Nintendo home console. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. The NES controller. Designed for the Nintendo Entertainment System, which released in 1985, the controller has a simple, yet iconic design. On the left, it has a D-pad. On the right, there's an A and B button. And in the middle, there's a start and select button. And that is pretty much it for this controller. It's simple, but it had everything it needed. However, this controller does have one feature which sucks. And that is its shape. The flat rectangular design of this controller is simply not ergonomic enough. The corners are not rounded enough, which means that after extended periods of time using this controller, it can really start to dig into your hands. The SNES controller. Designed for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, released in 1990, this controller takes the original NES's design and builds upon it a heap. It has a way more rounded and ergonomic design compared to its predecessor, which allows it to really comfortably fit in your hands. Similarly to the NES, this controller has a D-pad on the left, A and B buttons on the right, and start and select buttons in the middle. But on top of this, there is now two more buttons on the right, being an X and Y button, and there's L and R shoulder buttons. However, whilst there is no doubt that this controller built upon the foundation that the NES set, it does have one feature which sucks. And this is its shoulder buttons. Because whilst this controller does have the L and R buttons, they're placed on the top surface of the controller rather than being buttons you can kind of push into. And essentially, this leads to it not being as comfortable to use as it could have been. And yes, I'm going to admit that this is a bit of a nitpick because in all honesty, given the time this controller was released, it is an amazing controller. If you just add analog sticks and hand grips to this thing, you have pretty much got a PS5 controller, which is absolutely crazy to think about considering that this came out over 30 years ago. The Virtual Boy controller. This was released with the Virtual Boy in 1995. This controller has got not one, but two D-pads, which is kind of weird, but also kind of cool in a lot of ways. It's also got A and B buttons on the right hand side and the start and select buttons on the left. It's got hand grips as well, which is pretty cool. And as well as this, since the Virtual Boy was a 3D system, it's got an adjustment knob on it as well, which can be used to optimize the 3D effect. However, it does have one fundamental feature which sucks. And that is the fact that the Virtual Boy controller is actually built in directly to the console. So you can't take it out and plug it into another system. You've just got the one controller which is stuck inside the console. So that means if the controller breaks or becomes faulty, your whole system kind of dies with it. The Nintendo 64 controller. This controller released in 1996 along with the 
Nintendo 64, and it's probably Nintendo's most distinctive controller ever. It has three grips which extend from the central base of the controller, and it basically means that the controller can be held in multiple different ways, depending on which controls you need to access for the game you're playing. And alongside having a lot of the standard buttons that we've seen on a lot of the previous controllers, there is also four C buttons on this controller, a trigger on the underside of the center grip, and an analog stick, which allowed for way more precise control of movement versus a D-pad. However, it does have one feature which sucks. And that is the accessibility of its buttons. Whilst the trident shape and having three grips on the controller is kind of cool and really sets this controller apart, it's also not very practical because it essentially means that at all times, one third of the buttons on this controller are not accessible. If you're using the analog stick, you cannot access the D-pad very easily at all. And likewise, if you're using the D-pad, then the analog stick is pretty much not in use. I feel like with a great controller, you should be able to access everything just with the movement of a finger, not by moving your whole hand to a new grip. The GameCube controller. This controller came alongside the GameCube when it was released in 2001. And this controller is pretty much a Nintendo 64 controller, except they've fixed its biggest flaw. They've ditched the three grips and gone back to two, and it's got pretty much all of the same buttons, but they're all way more accessible, which is fantastic and probably the best thing about this controller. One of the other best features of this controller is the introduction of a second analog stick, which allowed for more precise control and camera manipulation in games. Alongside this, the placement of the A, B, X, and Y buttons is less uniform, but way more intuitive for when playing games. I like that there's the central A buttons and then the B, X, and Y buttons kind of hover around it. I think that's a really neat addition. However, the GameCube controller has a feature that I don't like, and that is the C stick. The knob on this analog stick is just not good enough. It wears down your thumb, the plastic feels pretty cheap, and overall it's just not comfy to use this stick. If it had two analog sticks like the left analog stick, then this thing would be pretty much flawless. The Wii Remote. Released with the Nintendo Wii in 2006, this controller is most known for its motion sensing capabilities, which allowed players to interact with games by physically moving the controller rather than hitting buttons. This controller has got a completely revised form factor resembling a television remote that is meant to be held in just one hand. Alongside the motion sensing technology, it's got a heap of different buttons on it as well, which are actually pretty well placed. You can use this controller in a lot of different ways. You can hold it upright in one hand, you can flip it over and use it like an NES controller, you can plug in a nunchuck and get an analog analog stick, and it has rumble features which allows the remote to actually give feedback to players in game. However, the worst feature of this controller is the precision of its motion sensing capabilities. Whilst being the primary gimmick of the controller, the motion control at the beginning just simply wasn't good enough for fine tuned movements, which actually did detract from a lot of games in the Wii's library. Luckily this was eventually fixed with the Wii Motion Plus, but I'm just going off the base controller here, and whilst there's a lot to love about the Wii Remote, its precision was definitely not one of those things. The Wii U Gamepad. This was the primary controller for the Nintendo Wii U when it released in 2012, and if I were to list all of the funky features this thing had, I'd probably be sitting here all day. So instead, let's go over the main things. Firstly, this controller had a touch screen screen inbuilt into the center of it, which not only acted as a control input for many games, but also acted as a second screen. In a lot of ways, the Wii U was the home console version of the DS. Alongside this, it has two analog sticks, a D-pad, and a pretty standard selection of buttons on the rest of the gamepad. Additionally, the Wii U gamepad was, in a lot of ways, the predecessor to the Nintendo Switch, because you could actually stream games 
games onto the gamepad and play them in handheld mode, which is a pretty amazing feature. However, the worst feature of the Wii U gamepad was definitely its battery life. The overall battery life of this controller is approximately three to five hours, which sucks. The Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. Released in 2017 alongside the Nintendo Switch, the Joy-Cons are overall a pretty awesome controller. There are a lot of features built into these things. Not only are they compact, but they also have all the buttons you're ever going to need. They have gyroscope and motion sensing technology built into them, so they can pretty much act like Wii remotes as well. They have an IR motion camera built into them, them, which can detect shapes, distances, and enable features like hand tracking, which I will admit is probably the least used feature on the whole Nintendo Switch, but nonetheless, it's pretty cool. They've got HD rumble technology as well, and the biggest and arguably the best feature of this controller is that they are fully detachable from the Nintendo Switch console, so you can use it as a standard remote for the Nintendo Switch when you're playing on the TV. And then when you prefer to play in handheld mode, you can just lock them onto the tablet itself. However, the worst feature of the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons are the directional buttons. And by that, I mean the up, down, left, and right buttons that are in place of a traditional D-pad. I think most people would agree that these buttons are just simply a downgrade from the D-pad. And I get why they need to be there, because it allows both sides of the controller to be relatively uniform. But nonetheless, I just wish there was a D-pad on these things. Because when you're playing a game and you're using these buttons for movement, I just think it's so uncomfortable. It's not always always as responsive as I'd like it to be, and I don't know, I think it's just an overall comfort thing for me. So anyways, that is going to wrap up today's video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you disagree with anything I said here and think there's actually some other features on the controllers that are worse than what I mentioned, you should definitely let me know in the comments section down below. Anyways, with that, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.